I'm here at Wavertree Botanic Park and behind me is the iconic Little Woods building which is due for renovation and I'm going to take a look at what's happening in the central swathe of Liverpool construction wise starting out here in the east and then working our way into the city and ending up at the river. In December 2023, coincidental to the making of this video, it was officially announced the work would soon begin on preparing the derelict Littlewoods building for redevelopment. The announcement was made at an on-site press event by developers Capital and Centric in association with the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority represented by Metro Mayor Steve Rotherham. This Art Deco building dominates the main route into Liverpool from the M62 and can be seen across Wavertree Botanic Park. It was built in 1938 and was the workplace of an army of employees, mostly female, who helped to check the football coupons completed by thousands of people up and down the country. Some were lucky enough to, as they used to say, come up on the pools, but most didn't. With the coming of the National Lottery in the 1990s, things changed. The building was vacated and it's been mostly empty ever since. A fire in 2018 caused damage. Part of the roof collapsed, but the developers said it would make little difference as the entire structure will be completely renovated and transformed into a studio complex for film and television. Two big new studios will be constructed next to it. The public will have access to the complex as well. They'll be able to visit the screening and performance space. There'll be a new connection with Wavertree Botanic Park. The so-called Hollywood of the North, I wish they'd stop using that phrase, will help to create many jobs. That's if it goes ahead. The plan is that it will. The initial remedial works have been approved. The Liverpool City Region Combined Authority is providing support of £17 million. The visualisations look great. So is it a traditional clock on the west side, digital on the east? Actually, I think that would be a good idea. And now let's fly half a mile to the west. That's All Saints Church, the former St. Mary's Church, Edge Hill. And on the site close by, a revolutionary new building is set to appear. It's going to be built just behind the Spine and the Clayton Hotel, seen here on the left. Welcome to Paddington Village, owned by Liverpool City Council, with funding support from the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority. And there it is, the new building, which is split in two, with a light-filled atrium in between. It's a seven-storey building that is designed to be the first net-zero carbon building in the city region. An urban village with science, tech, education and health in its DNA at the heart of the KQ Liverpool Innovation District. So say the science. The name of the project is Hemisphere, inspired by the human brain, though it's not really shaped like a human brain. It's a building of two halves. Construction is set to begin soon. The sign says, Welcome to Paddington Village. But where does the name Paddington come from? Well, it revives the name of a lost street that was the continuation of Brownlow Hill. You can see it on old maps. Interesting how some Liverpool place names echo those in London. For instance, Vauxhall, Islington and Kensington. Now we're looking over the Liverpool skyline. In front of us is what I'm going to call the central swathe, where we're going to visit more projects in progress or in planning. Over to the right, our next project, the new Liverpool Royal University Hospital. I documented this building when it was in its final stages of construction. It was delayed for quite a long time, but now it's open. We can see people and taxis milling around the main entrance, which is on the south facing side. It's a state of the art building containing state of the art healthcare facilities Facilities, the largest hospital in the country with 100% single ensuite bedrooms for inpatients. It opened in October 2022, around five years late. The delay was due to problems with concrete, asbestos and the weather and the cladding, as well as financial difficulties following the collapse of the main contractor, Carillion. Like the old hospital, there's a link with the building next door. That's the Clatterbridge Cancer Centre, a striking piece of modern architecture designed by BDP architects. Architects. It looks like an ocean liner, very fitting for Liverpool. In the past, I've asked the question, does well-designed architecture improve people's health? Well, based on family experience, I think if you're not feeling well and go for treatment in a building that looks good and feels good and that makes a positive impression on you, you will feel better and hopefully get better. There, just behind, is the old Liverpool Royal Hospital. The architecture of the 1960s now outmoded and ready to be destroyed. Ironically, it was also delayed for years due to construction problems. Danger, demolition in progress, says the sign. And and on the north side of the site, we can witness a remarkable spectacle. What's happening here? 
A giant crane, topped with a massive pair of jaws, is literally ripping apart the old building. It looks like a mechanical dinosaur. I could watch it for hours. Water sprays help to keep down the amount of dust, and on the crane itself there is a continuous stream of water for the same purpose. We can see that the old building also has a link to its neighbour. I once took a photograph from that link towards the Metropolitan Cathedral for the book Liverpool Then and Now. Unfortunately, the photo wasn't used. Here is the main entrance that I visited not so long ago. Proud to be part of Knowledge Quarter Liverpool. That poster has been up for a while, and now those future plans are mostly completed. Here's a flashback to 2021 when this was the entrance to the A&E department and upstairs, the cafe with the large windows. Now all closed and they'll soon be gone. But at least I've documented it here. The sign declares, this A&E is not open. Please do not use this entrance. And for the record, the new A&E is round the corner off Furness Street, L78YE. Let's go back for a bit more entertainment as we watch Dave the Hungry Dinosaur continuing to dismember the old building. I think I'll bring a deck chair and a flash next time and stay for a couple of hours of prime entertainment. Now we move on to a major project I featured previously. This is next to the TJ Hughes building on London Road. It's one of the biggest residential buildings in the city taking up a whole block. It will house rental apartments for students and for others. It's on the site of the old Hughes House, formerly part of the Liverpool-based department store TJ Hughes. The neighbouring TJ Hughes building, with its distinctive corner towers, will be converted into a residential building. In September, the TJ Hughes Liverpool store moved into new premises on Church Street. Close by is the Limelight building, originally named Natex after National Express. Another delayed project. It's pretty much complete now with its high-tech exterior. It stands on the site of the former Norton Street bus station. This is the only photo I ever took. The sign at the front of the bus says Dublin and Belfast Ferry Service. Just a short distance away, we can see that renovation work is proceeding on the exterior of the Walker Art Gallery, here reflected in a large puddle. The Christmas Fair is in progress right next to it. They're carrying out improvement works on the exterior fabric of the building, but the gallery is fully open. It's one of my favourite museums with some great temporary photographic exhibitions. I find many of the paintings a great inspiration for photography. It's located on William Brown Street, which, according to Wikipedia, is the only street in the country that consists only of museums, galleries and libraries. Libraries. Now we go straight down to Prince's Stock, part of the Liverpool Waters Redevelopment District. And here's another site I featured in the past. This is going to be the new residential tower named Patagonia Place. The central core is starting to rise. And how long will it take to construct? It's now the 8th of December, 2023. So keep watching Aid and Eyewitness to see the new tower slowly rise and reach the height of the crane. It will slot in nicely alongside Plaza 1823 and the Lexington building further along. Let's also note that it was, in part, these tall buildings that persuaded UNESCO to withdraw world heritage status. Were they right? Just close to here, another important element of Liverpool waters is nearing completion. It's the Isle of Man ferry terminal. I went through those lock gates many times on the B&I line ferry to and from Dublin, but now the lock gates are sealed up. I find that this new terminal has a strong similarity to the old B&I line ferry port. John H. Luxton took some fantastic photographs of the abandoned ferry port. I'll put a link in the description. I'm always drawn to the river and love the views across to the other side, but over there we can see another construction site I featured previously. Let's fly over from Liverpool waters to Wirral waters and take a look at what's happening there. So. Here are the stages of construction from mid-2023 up to December 2023. The most striking feature, I think, is the use of sloping roofs, which give this state-of-the-art development a friendly, homely feel. The transformation from abandoned former Dockland area to developing residential districts is slow but noticeable. So we'll head back across the Mersey into the city and there's one more project where work is going on. It's at the Metropolitan Cathedral. The graduands of Liverpool University are gathering after receiving their degrees. But behind them, the former cafe is being taken apart. Like the Metropolitan Cathedral itself, structural problems have necessitated reconstruction works. Here's how it looked before with the sound of the cathedral bells. I understand from the Metropolitan Cathedral website that plans for this corner site are not yet finalised, but they hope to put up visualisations on the boards before too long. And just close to it, the Victoria Building of Liverpool University is also undergoing exterior renovation work. And here's an excellent image by that prolific photographer Rod Holonimu, whose countless photos of Liverpool can be seen on Wikipedia. And so we see how construction, demolition and renovation 
are proceeding in Liverpool city centre at a somewhat less frantic pace than in Manchester. But I don't think that's a problem. Cities can develop at different rates with buildings of different heights. It's not a race to the sky. My next video will feature current and planned construction across the central swathe of Manchester city centre online soon. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell others about it and post a comment if you have any extra information or opinion to share. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in Liverpool.